Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Lump of Sugar, a Korean drama from 2006. Now our protagonist is a young woman by the name of Si Young, and the film begins during her childhood years, when she lived on her father's farm. Now she collapses on a winter day, and a horse saves her life by bringing her back home. Now she develops a close, loving relationship with this horse, and also gets her first taste of horse racing by watching the nearby racetrack. We then jump in time to when she is, is in her early 20s, and the horse is giving birth to a foal. Now eventually, the girl and the foal become separated by circumstances beyond her control. Some time passes, and our protagonist is working at a racetrack, taking care of the horses and performing as a jockey when she gets the opportunity, and things go from there. Now when I saw this film way back in the day, the only reason I rented it is because Su Young Lim stars in the lead role. My first Su Young Lim experience was with A Tale of Two Sisters, of course, from 2003, but she was in a handful of impressive films within a fairly short period of time. Now, some of her other better titles include Ing from 2003, Sad Movie from 2005, I'm a Cyborg But That's Okay from 2006, and Happiness from 2007. So Lump of Sugar came out within that same time period. You know, a time when I was gobbling up every film from this actress that I could find because I, was, I had so much catching up to do, right? Going into it, all I knew about L Lump of Sugar is that it had Soo Young Lim in the lead role and it had cute horsies. And I was sold, right? But this film was surprisingly impactful in terms of its drama. You know, it, it does have a bit of that melodramatic, tear-jerking feel to it but it never feels cheap or manipulative in its execution because the relationships between the characters are so well-developed. You know, they feel like real people who are faced with understandable obstacles. You know, this is especially true of our lead character. Heck, I would even say that the freaking horse was given enough character development in this film, so much so that it becomes really the main character during the final 20 minutes. The viewer experiences the joys and the sufferings of the horse throughout the film, and there are a few actually very cool statements that this horse makes that indirectly through its actions. You know, there's one scene near the end, a kind of a rainy night, and the horse does something, and you know exactly what this horse wants. And it's not Mr. Ed, you know, it's not, it doesn't start talking, but you know what this horse wants, and the characters do too. And there's scenes like that that are really cool. I really like that. By the end of the movie... You know, you're gonna have no choice but respect the character of this horse and readily admit that he's a tough son of a gun. It still makes me a little teary-eyed thinking about the guy. Now, the occasional horse racing scenes are nicely shot for the most part. Camera work hits you from a lot of different angles. My favorite parts were the wide shots on the ground level where the camera scrolls sideways and follows the horses as they're racing. Really cool shots. You really get to experience, like, the speed the grace and the power of the horses during those shots. I really like those. This is especially true during the nighttime finale under the lights, which has an even greater sense of intensity to it. In terms of a few things that could have been improved on, there are a few contrivances and improbable coincidences that pop up once in a while. Only a few, though. Not a big deal. I won't explain exactly what they were to avoid spoilers. Also, the script writing is pretty simplistic in this. You know, for example, a few of the side characters are very one-dimensional in their unlikability. You know, I'm talking specifically about a few of the trainers and owners who are real freaking jerks. But there are also a few of the supporting protagonists that I think were kind of gypped in terms of character depth. There's no real depth to some of the side characters in this film. Not a big problem for me, though, since the entire film revolves around Siyun and her horse. And let me tell you... That relationship works, and that, you know, it revolves around it. So you definitely, like I said, you feel for her. You get her as a, as a, uh, uh, a realistic human being. You know, she feels like a real human being dealing with these issues, and uh, that drives it. And this is a good movie. I really like it. And as an added bonus, we get a theme tune that gets me emotional every time it plays during the movie. You'll know when it hits. It hits early, and it hits, they pepper it throughout, and it's, it's a good... Definitely a good little jingle that uh, is kind of the theme of the film. So looking back on it, Lump of Sugar is a very mainstream Korean film that is very marketable to Western audiences. So 
I'm actually rather surprised that it's not mentioned that often when movie fans discuss Korean films of this era. Uh, I'm not sure if the distribution of this wasn't very good. I think it's available just on Region 3 DVD with subtitles. So that might be the reason why. I don't know if it got a U.S. release or not, but in either case, this is one of those movies that you might fall in love with from the very first scene. So check this one out. And as always, I'll see you next time.